What's up, dudes? It's the freaking Deke. Uh, so psyched to be back in the shop, as always. Today, informational, educational, and entertaining. Cast iron repair might be a long one. Let's get into it. Get your motor running. First, you need to identify the brake in the cast iron. There it is. Step two is you have to actually determine that the part is made of cast iron. It means one thing for me, spark test. Time to get the lights sexy in here. Am I right or am I right? Oh yeah, baby, what's, oh my gosh, look at the D. Appropriate lighting, boys, let's do it. So, how we do a spark test is we dim the lights a little, which I have done, you're welcome. Then I'm gonna spark a piece of mild steel, spark a piece of cast iron, and then spark the actual part. Mild steel will be more yellow and have a lot more trails, more sparky, so to speak. Cast iron is gonna be a lot more orange and less sparky. So let's determine to really make sure that this part right here is cast iron. What? Okay, now that we have it spark tested, step three, prep your piece. You wanna knock off paint, clean away from the joint, make it nice, make it nice. Let's clean this piece up, boys. What's up, dude? And of course, turn your freaking lights back on. What the heck, who works in the dark? What are you, Batman? Not today, boys, let's clean it up. On a side note, you don't really know what has been painted on that cast iron before. Chances are the part is very old. You don't know how many layers of lead and garbage freaking radiation paint. What? Oh, radiation paint. I don't know. You don't know what kind of layers of garbage you have on that thing. So just, I mean, I know it's lame, but put a respirator on. Have the shop well vented when you're grinding all that old paint off. Okay. Uh, double check that, boys. Double check that, dude. Done. Now. We obviously, obviously, is it obvious? Step four, hmm? Step one, identify the break. Step two, spark test. Step three, prep the material. Step four, check fit. Make sure your, your joint is beveled so you can weld this baby appropriately. That's a good check. Make sure that your fit is nice. Good, so it fits nice, this thing's ready to rock. Okay, step five. Identify what filler material you're going to use. This looks like it says silicon bronze right here. It's actually not. I wrote on it with orange marker, 332, nickel 99. Yeah, I, it wasn't marker, it was paint marker and it was running, but there's two sticks of 332 nickel 99 in here, which is what I'm going to use. It's important to know the difference. So let's just quickly review the difference. You can weld it with silicon bronze, right? Absolutely. If you need it to be really strong, you need to weld it with nickel. You have two choices, nickel 99 or nickel 55. Nickel 99, non-machinable, single pass, very strong, very nice. Nickel 55, multi-pass, machinable, also nice. Some people actually do a root pass with nickel 99 and then fill with nickel 55. That's super advanced, it doesn't really matter. Chances are you have a small cast iron piece like I do. We're gonna TIG weld it with nickel 99 single pass. Then I'm leaving as much of that weld on there as possible just for strength. So, step five, identify the appropriate filler material for your joint whether that be a 99, 55, or silicon bronze. Quick review, silicon bronze, strong, easy, great, not as strong. Nickel 99, considerably strong, single pass. Nickel 55, multi-pass, machinable, also strong. Nickel 99 is non-machinable, unless you have carbide tools or something, it doesn't matter. You could knock it down if you have to. We like 99 for this application, so 332, nickel 99 for this particular cast iron repair. That would be step five. Moving on to step six, you need to preheat your material. So you're supposed to bring the all, 
Technically, if you can get the whole piece to preheat, I recommend you heat the whole piece. You want it to get up to 500 degrees minimum, 1200 degrees maximum. So I'm gonna try to heat this piece evenly and get it up to somewhere between five and 600 degrees. What I'm gonna use is just gonna be a rosebud, Victor, torch, no big deal, oxyacetylene. You can use whatever you have, a barbecue, a fire pit, map gas. I don't know, what, not a doctor or a scientist, just a semi random dude who makes these videos. So. I'm gonna use a rosebud oxyacetylene. I am going to freaking pay attention here. How do you check the temperature? That's a great question. As far as I'm concerned, there's one of two ways. First way, you can use a temperature stick made by Markall or many other people, but Markall makes them 500, 550, 600 degrees. It's like a crayon and you swipe it on there, you heat it as the crayon melts off, crayon, Utah. As the crayon melts off, what's up champ? That's when you know you're appropriately up to temperature. I personally am gonna use an infrared thermometer. Yeah, it's warm out here, boys. It's warm out here. I'm gonna use an infrared thermometer. This is close. I think it's plus or minus four degrees. It's gonna work. Between five and 600, I'm gonna have the TIG set up ready. That would be step seven, I think at this point, is to get that nickel 99332 by Blue Demon, which we love, and then weld this joint. TIG's gonna be set up. I'm preheating. I'm checking, 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 checking. Boom, 500, 550, 600. Let's do it. Tack, 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 tack. Make sure everything stays square, nice, level, proper, appropriate. And then I'm going to uh, weld this joint shut. The reason I'm telling you all this now is because it's kind of got to happen in a quick succession. So I'm not going to dance around and explain it all why this thing's cooling in the air. You want to preheat five, six, seven hundred up to 1200 degrees, then weld the joint, and then you want to slow cool it. So for, for me, in this application, I'm going to use floor dry in a bucket. You can use sand, you can build a fire, put it in a fire, that actually works, and then slowly let the fire melt out, burn down, what have you. I don't know what it's called when you burn a fire out. I know this is a lot, but this is important for you cats to know, dude. Post heating and peening is very important. I will have a hammer, I will tap, tap, tap to stress relieve the material, to help the material I don't know exactly what it does, but I know the old school guys always say peen. I think that's a stress relief situation. I think, what do you mean? That's what you have to do. It's old school, we know that's how you do it. That's what a peening hammer is for, to peen the material mid-weld, heat weld, heat weld, peen, 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 peen. Then we're gonna fully weld this thing. I'm gonna pick it up. I'm gonna put it in a bucket of floor dry and then I'm gonna let this thing cool. Cool, 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 take all day. I want it to stay warm, stay hot in that floor dry and just slowly come back down. So that was a lot. I understand a little bit annoying, but hopefully it was informational. I am going to first preheat, then I'm going to weld, then I'm going to peen, then I'm going to weld some more, then I'm going to peen, then I'm gonna submerge it and floor dry and let that baby take all day to cool. That is what you wanna do. Let's fire up the torch. Let's fire up the TIG. Let's fire up the floor dry. And let's get this part fixed. Let's go, boys. Here we go, boys. What's up, dude? Here we go. Game time. This is where you gotta pay attention, be fast. I hope this goes well. Fingers crossed, but feeling good as always. In the zone, be the zone. You are the zone. Let's achieve greatness. We're welding cast iron. Let's do it. Oh, quick side note, because I just turned the machine on as I'm getting ready to do this. DC, I'm gonna have it at about 160, which is too much, but I like to have plenty of pedal. DC, Argon, we're in the game. Now we go. Parts welded, came out very well, I think. The weld looks nice anyway. Probably, honestly, 
I kind of blew it, just so everybody, I'm well aware, I should add a respirator on, because I gave you the whole spiel about lead paint. Not a great idea, and I was welding that. But I gotta get this thing cooling. No point in crying about spilled milk. Let's get this done. I'm rushing, I'm rushing. Are you rushing or dragging? Whiplash, great flick. Put that in your list of stuff to watch. Time to submerge this in floor dry. I'm gonna leave it overnight. It's gonna have plenty of time to cool down. It's peened, it's welded, it's sick. Nickel 99, let's submerge. Uh, we submerge. Hot. Dudes, I was getting so hot just barely because I wanted to keep the temperatures up, which I think I did. <laughs> yes, okay, quick review. Step one, identify the break. Step two, spark test. Very important. Make sure it's actually cast iron or not cast steel. Quick side note, if it's cast steel, well, it was 7018 or uh, ER70S2 on the TIG. It's good. Maybe a little preheat, maybe a little peen just for the heck of it. Anyway, step three, prep your material. Step four, identify your filler that you want to use. Step five, preheat 500 to 1200 degrees. Step six, DC. Good thing I had 160 amps, by the way, because I threw some heat at that baby. Nice, strong weld. Uh, that would be step six, would be TIG it up like a champ. Nickel 99 is what I used. Step seven, slowly bring it back down to temperature. And then uh, if it's step seven or step eight, I'm not for sure, but uh, celebrate a job well done, boys, because most people are afraid of cast iron, but we can do it because we champions. Here's the regular level. Uh, we rise to the next level. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I had fun shooting it as always. Burned my finger out of respect. That would be that, as they say. Uh, in the movie business, we call that a wrap. It's the mother frickin' deep, and I'm out.